what's up guys, David here, 1, 2, and 2, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, and today is an important list in our best cards of the main sets of the game, and that is the Duelist Genesis. Ah yes, Duelist Genesis, the first 5D's era set. Card games on motorcycles! We are finally, finally creeping up to more modern styles of Yu-Gi-Oh! And with the first blanketly inherent summon condition from the extra deck, and that is the Synchro Summon. Fun facts about Duel's Genesis introduces the tuner type monsters, the Synchro Summoning mechanic, obviously, as well as a new type to the game, the Psychic type monsters, which is neat. And because this was the first Synchro set of the game, we saw cards that like Yusei Fudo used, as well as Jack Atlas. I came. What? And then a couple legacy cards that Yugi used, as well as uh, some spirit support. So there was kind of a mixed bag, and honestly, this set was actually very, very strong, which is cool because you know what? If you're gonna try to sell a new mechanic, you really should probably release some decent monsters and, and ways in order to use the mechanic. So it's really cool to see this first synchro set really kind of came out of the gate uh, at a nice gallop. But anyway, without further ado, let's get started with number ten. Let's go. Number 10 is D-Synchro. <laughs> Here's a weird one. Uh, we're top 10 best cards of the first Synchro set of the game, and the first card on that list is D-Synchro. <laughs> Irony aside, what does D-Synchro do? D-Synchro is a normal spell card that reads, target one Synchro monster on the field. Return that monster to the extra deck, and if the material that was used to make that is in your graveyard, you can special summon all of that if you would like to. The cool thing about this card is it doesn't specify whether it has to be your Synchro monster or your opponent's Synchro monster, making this card actually have a neat dual purpose in the game. Obviously, you can use it on your own monster to turn off a Synchro monster and bring back its material to make something else, presumably something with the same level as what you played before. Maybe you need a different effect, like you don't need your Stardust Dragon anymore, you need Stardust Spark or something, I don't know. But you can also use it against your opponent's Synchro monsters to simply just one for one away one of their Synchro monsters that might be giving you some trouble. So this card ends up actually being pretty versatile despite the fact it is only a normal spell card. Number nine is Thought Ruler Archfiend. All Archfiends are thoughts. This level eight dark psychic type synchro monster has the following effect. If this card destroys a monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can gain life points equal to the attack of the monster that you killed. Okay. But also as a second effect, during either player's turn, when a spell or trap is activated that targets one psychic type monster on your side of the field, you can pay a thousand life points to negate the activation of that card and destroy it. Hoo hoo hoo! Oh man, you got them psychic types coming out of the gate. Slowly but surely, we are starting to get into more modern mechanics of Yu-Gi-Oh! where we're having extra deck monsters with uh, effects that can be used during either player's turn in having some sort of inherent self-protection as well. We are getting more modern cards. Isn't that just neat to see how the game is moving? Obviously, he protects only Psychic-type monsters from targeted spell or traps. However, he himself is a Psychic-type monster, so at worst case scenario, he can protect himself. During the early stages of the Synchro era, this was probably one of the better ones we had. Obviously, he didn't see much play after that, but, 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 he most certainly did see tons of play early on because we didn't have many good options. But not to take anything away from him, he is still all that considering a decent synchro monster. Number eight is Gladiator Beast War Chariot. Gladiator Beast War Chariot is a counter trap card with the following effect. When an effect monster's effect is activated and you control one Gladiator Beast monster, negate the activation of that effect, and if you do, destroy it. War Chariot's just your, you know, Infernity Barrier for Glad Beasts. Uh, it gives them a really solid piece of back row protection. Being a counter trap, it's hard to deal with, and it would take quite a few years before we got, you know, generic replacements like Solemn Strike for this card. So, honestly, this card's still pretty decent. Good old War Chariot. Searchable, too. Oh boy. The bottom of this list from here on out could probably be in any order. Um, because all of these cards are good for different reasons. <sighs> this is probably the worst, and that's really rough to say that. Red Dragon Archfiend. Red Dragon Archfiend is a level eight dark dragon synchro monster with the following effect. After damage calculation, if this thing attacked a defense position monster, you can destroy all defense position monsters your opponent controls. Meaning if all your opponent's guys are in defense mode and he attacks once, it's a board nuke. 
Dark Dragon is a fantastic typing, so he's got tons of outside support in order to bring him in, as well as uh, Resonators and other Red Dragon Archfiend support more tailored to him. So, tons of fun things for your Red Dragon Archfiend with retrains and everything. However, it does have a negative effect. During the end phase, he destroys all monsters you control that did not attack this turn. He must be face up on the field to activate and resolve this effect, however. So, if you could remove him somehow, like synchro him for something else, maybe like a 9 or whatever, then okay, he won't nuke your board. But overall, a great way for dealing with your opponent's monsters, especially if you use the next card. Number six is Book of Eclipse. Book of Eclipse is a quick play spell card. Ooh! With the following effect, change all face-up monsters on the field to face-down defense position. It's a mass Book of Moon. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! However, there is a downside to this card. During the end phase of the turn you activated this card, flip all of your opponent's face-down defense position monsters to face up, and then they get to draw a card for each one they flipped. Now, Book of Mooning your opponent's entire board might seem good. It interrupts their extra deck summoning plays, as well as just generally stops them from doing what they're trying to do. But that downside of them drawing a bunch of cards during the end phase is really, really frustrating. The only upside to that being that it is their end phase, so more than likely they probably can't use the stuff they've drawn, so you have a turn to deal with the six cards they just put in their hand. Five? Well, at this point it'd be five. Max. But if you're playing like an empty char deck, where you're actually trying to mill your opponent out, making them draw four or five cards is ideal. So, uh, haha, -ha, joke's on you. I don't care how much is in your hand, I'm trying to deck you out. <laughs> this is one of those cards that you could probably even argue is one of the best cards in the set, like top three if you really wanted to, simply because that downside isn't always relevant and in certain formats this thing kind of just becomes a fantastic side deck option. Modern day it's a little weird with link monsters, however, you can't link, synchro, or exceed with monsters that are face down, so uh, as long as you can hit your opponent early in the middle of their wombo combo, uh, they probably can't do anything. This card is very, very good and being a quick play means it is just extremely versatile. Number five is Charge of the Light Brigade. Charge of the Light Brigade is a normal spell that reads, send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard, add one level four or lower Light Sworn monster from your deck to your hand. <laughs> oh man, whoever designed this card, it was a stroke of genius. This is exactly what Light Sworns want to do. Dumping three cards off the top of their deck is hardly a cost in Light Sworns because they want stuff in their grave in order to summon their Judgment Dragon or activate the graveyard effects, so it makes absolutely no sense to ever call that thing a cost or a negative in any respect. If anything, it's forwarding their game state, as well as searching a card, something like Raiden in the later uh, iterations of the deck, which means you're just also getting to the monsters that are starters or extenders for your plays. This thing is fantastic. You, you absolutely need this if you're playing Light Sworns at all. It's, it's, a, it's a mill and a search. It's everything you could want in a spell. It's a fantastic one for one. Number four is Stardust Dragon. I came. What? Aha! Here we go, Stardust freaking dragon. This level 8 Wind Dragon monster is Yusei's ace monster card, as well as being one of the better synchro monsters we ever got in this game. Coming out in the very first set and being one of the protagonist's main cards, that's actually pretty impressive for Yu-Gi-Oh! Even modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Where like that first new set of a new mechanic isn't always the best, so it's really cool to see a really solid poster boy for the summoning mechanic to help push that mechanic into the meta. But that's enough. Blowing uh, Stardust Dragon's I came. What? What does he do? During either player's turn, if a card or effect is activated that would destroy a card or cards on the field, you can tribute this card, negate the activation of that effect, and destroy it. Basically, if your opponent tries to pop something with a card destruction effect or tries to board nuke you with something like Dark Hole or Regeki, that's not gonna fly with Stardust Dragon. Again, as you can see, we're starting to get those more modern style effects where you have a monster with some sort of self-protection against something like a Regeki or Dark Hole, as well as a blanket protection for the board. It's just one more negate. You can really tell that these synchro monsters, you know, they were hard to make. You gotta do math and have a tuner on board. So they really gave them some good effects to, to really give you some uh, reward for all that effort you put in to make them. And as a bonus, if he's in your graveyard during the end phase of the turn, you used his negation effect to put him there, you can special summon him back to your board to be used once again. 
That's a lot of value out of Stardust Dragon. At 2,500 attack, he's not the weakest beater in the in the old drawer of hammers. So his modest attack power is actually putting in some work as well as his neat protection effect for your board. Like your Red Dragon Archfiend, he also does have some support simply built specifically for him. A lot of Yusei cards and things like that, but he does happen to have one of the coolest not-so-fast Kaiba cards in the game stuck to him, and that is your Starlight Road. A negate and a summon. That's good Yu-Gi-Oh! Number three is Emergency Teleport. Emergency Teleport's actually low-key probably my favorite card in this set and one of my favorite cards in general. It's just a very versatile quick play spell and I love it and it plays in my Cosmo deck. <laughs> But anyway, what's e telly do? Special summon one level 3 or lower psychic type monster from your deck or your hand, but during the end phase it is banished. That almost never happens. Why is that? Well, like I said, this set introduced psychics, and psychics seem to, you know, they do have some battle-oriented effects and things like that, but on the whole they seem to be, at least in some fashion, a synchro deck. So, obviously you're using e telly to get a monster on board that you are eventually going to synchro summon away, so you don't have to worry about that banishing effect. And that three or lower is strategic because that tends to be where your tuners levels are so this will even grab tuners out of the deck which is nifty or tin can if you're me and playing cosmos the titular e telly is actually one of the namesakes of the deck teledad other being dark arm dragon which was a meta deck around this time this is why because it lets you just pull free stuff out of your deck Cool thing is that it also gets one out of your hand, so if you, let's say, are only running like a handful of targets, no pun intended, and you accidentally draw this and your garnet, you don't have to worry about this thing being dead. It'll still summon from your hand. It's not great card advantage, but it's not the end of the world. You can at least still make a play. I like some E-Telly. Please bring it back to three. I will do awful things for this at three. Oh, number two, what happened to you? You got an errata. And now you are Pooh. Goyo Guardian! Goyo Guardian is a level 6 synchro monster with 2800 attack and 2000 defense. Actually impressive stats for a level 6 monster. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon that card to your side of the field in defense position. Whoa, that is some good card advantage right there. Summoning your opponent's garbage to your side of the field is just really, really handy, especially if it's like a mirror match or something like that, making Goyo Guardian particularly good, especially in these early stages of the Synchro era, where your main phase two could actually be used to extend your plays out and not just be some something you skip right through because you just were in turn one, had no battle phase, and made an invincible board. Uh. However, he did receive an errata so that the monster that you had to make him with is an Earth Tuner as opposed to, you know, just a generic Synchro monster. That stinks! However, that's not the end of the world because there are some decent Earth Tuners. It's just frustrating to see a really, really good Synchro monster get a nerf, which happened so very late into the card's life when it was also, I believe, not even on the ban list at the time. Like, it just got a, an errata out of nowhere. It, I'm pretty sure somebody at Konami just really doesn't like Goyo Guardian. Like, think about it. It was on the ban list forever, longer than it should have been. Then it came back to one and sat there, longer than it should have been. And then even though it's not at zero, it still gets an errata for some reason out of the blue. Don't know why. And then we get it in Duel Links, and you can't just have it in your deck. And if you do with uh, trudges of uh, skill, it like erases everything else in your extra deck. Like, what the hell? Why do they keep... Who hates Goyo Guardian so much? I bet it's Jerome. I bet Jerome's got his monster stolen and now he's salty. Forever salty. So yeah, this set's actually really solid. So you bet your ass we have some honorable mentions. And the first honorable mentions is Krebens. Krebens? Creep. Krebons. Krebon. Cre creep. Phew. Let's call it Krebens. Krebens. Krebens is a level 2 dark tuner with the following effect. When this card is targeted for an attack, you pay 800 light points to negate that attack. That's not once per turn! So, uh, here is your honorary part 3 of the triangle uh, triforce that is Teledad. This is the thing you are most likely bringing out, or at least one of the things you're bringing out with that emergency teleport. Worst case scenario, you bring it out during a battle phase that you're about to get OTK and you spend a couple light points to just basically keep your opponent from killing you, which is really useful especially in old Yu-Gi-Oh. Or you use it on your turn to summon this thing out of the deck and actually make a synchro play. Hoi! 
and it's a dark so it's in your grave to make your dad live. The plays. You probably could have made an argument for this thing to even be on the list and replace one of the other cards. However, I figured because Itali's already on here, he'll get an honorable mention just to say, hey, look at me, I'm what you were summoning with Itali. The other honorable mention that we have is Herald of Orange Light. Ah oh, yes, there were heralds in this set as well. When your opponent activates a monster effect, you can send this and one other fairy in your hand to the graveyard, negate the activation of that effect, and if you do, destroy it. Yep, see, I told you, we're starting to get to more modern Yu-Gi-Oh! And Harold here, he's uh, he's starting to look a lot like a modern hand trap. Sure, it's a, it's a neg one in order to get rid of one of your opponent's cards, but it's not just a negate, like Ash Blossom, and it's not just a destroy, like your Ghost Ogre. Nope, it's a negate and destroy. So sometimes that neg one is worth it to get something off the board that's just being a big pain in the butt. So much so that this card is actually seen play, I think even into the Link era, because it might be a neg one, but that hand trap destroy on your opponent's turn if they're going first is really nice. And uh, if you can hit the right thing, you can really make your opponent's day pretty bad. And our dishonorable mention is the atrocious Equip Shot. Oh boy, you guys ready for this one? Equip Shot is a normal trap card with the following effect. You can only activate this thing during your battle phase. Select a monster on your side of the field that's in attack position that is equipped with an equipped spell and one attack position monster your opponent controls and equip that monster with the equip spell that's stuck to your monster and then force those two monsters to fight. Other effects cannot be activated during this battle. Hoy, man, this card is, like, really rough. First of all, you need to have a monster on your side of the field equipped with a equip card and also be in attack mode. Your opponent also needs an attack mode monster, so that's some, that's some setup, which always makes a card a little rough to use. As well as the fact that it can only be activated during the battle phase, meaning uh, that gives your opponent a draw, a standby, and a main phase in order for them to get this thing off the board and you can't even activate it in response. And then for what? To make your opponent steal your equip spell and then have them fight. There's very few instances where you'd ever really want to do that. I'm, I can't even think of any off the top of my head where you would have an equip spell equipped to your monster that you'd actually want on your opponent's monster when you wouldn't have just equipped it to your opponent's monster. Also that you can then uh, kill that monster presumably because why would you, I don't know why you'd want your monster to, to lose in battle. Which means that this card gets used, you lose your equip spell because you killed the thing that it was stuck to and you just went minus two for no reason. I, well, minus one if you kill the monster. If you don't, is it a minus two? Because it's like, you still control equip spell, but it's on your opponent's guy. It, it, it doesn't matter, it, it's a bad card. It's incredibly disrespectful. The only redeeming factor is that weird parentheses at the end of the, the card effect, which actually sounds like more, it's like just some condition of the activation. It doesn't even sound like it's the point of the card, but it actually might be the best part of the card, which is actually kind of funny. Parentheses, other effects cannot be activated during this battle, meaning the battle between two monsters that are involved in this effect. Like I said, it's in parentheses. It sounds like it's just some weird condition of a card not meant to actually much be paid much attention to. However, I think it's the best part of the card. Because if your opponent has some sort of battle effect on their monster, you could use this card to basically skill drain them, I guess. Or they can't use a battle trap, I guess, for that battle. It's the wonkiest way to turn your monster into an Armadis. Which is really weird because, again, it doesn't seem like it's actually the point of the card, just that would be its best function. The actual function of the card to swap the control of an equip spell would be better served by an equip play magic card like Taylor of the Fickle, which literally does this, and there is no weird setup required. I don't know what the point of this card is. There's probably some convoluted combo you can do with it. Like, I feel like it'd probably be some weird thing with Moon Mirror Shield, because you want to like, I don't know. I'm sure you can OTK with it. It's one of those weird effects. I'm sure there's a stupid OTK with it, but it's a bad card. And before we get to number one, the today's sponsor is, as always, MetaMats. If you guys want a custom cloth playmat, go to their website, type in the code Troll the Meta to get 10% off your playmat. It's awesome. It's the best. And if you ever want to just play any other games, it doesn't have to be Yu-Gi-Oh. They have just generic mats with no spaces on them or anything like that. So it's just they're just good mats in general. I love them. I would even use one as a pillowcase if they sold it. A body pillowcase. <laughs> And number one is the only banned card, Mindmaster. Man, they really want to make sure these, these psychic guys were good. So they gave you a broke one. Mindmaster is a level one light tuner. Uh-oh. With the following effect, you can pay 800 light points and tribute one other psychic monster on your field. Special summon a psychic monster from your deck. It's got to be a level four lower and it's got to be an attack position. But who cares? I care. 
You will notice this is not once per turn. You e-telly this out next to one of your other guys, you can summon every level four in your deck as long as it's a psychic monster. Where is this for my cosmos? Oh my god, please. So awesome. The combos. But no, you, you can't have a card like this. You can't just be not once per turn. This is just begging to be a loop. Like, there's so many dumb things you can do with this. This is the same thing as Substitute. Summon every copy of your cards out of your deck. It's, it's stupid. There's a reason why it's banned. Could it come off the ban list? Uh, yeah, with a hard once per turn, I think that's all you'd need. Otherwise, you're sacking one guy to get a guy out of your deck. That doesn't seem great, you know? It's, it's not because it's... It's not the effect that's good, it's the, the fact that you can do it a million times, which was good. So you can like cycle through your whole deck. So I think a hard once per turn, he can come back at three. You might see a little play, I don't know. It'd still be okay, it'd still be good. I just don't think it'd be broke anymore. But anyway guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed the first set of 5Ds. I'm, I'm actually getting excited for this because you know what? 5Ds is an era I didn't have much exposure to, so it'd be kind of cool just to go through it and see how things kind of played out. But anyway guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think, and remember guys, if you don't troll, no matter who will, I'll see you guys next time. Well, looks like they made it through the video, but you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.